Hello everyone. Today we're taking a look at the Flywoo Firefly 1S FR Nano Baby. And before we get started, an apology. I had posted uh, this video a few days ago and I was six ways of confused on what I was looking at. My apologies. I thought I was looking at an update to the original. Well, it's actually a different product. I know that now, but uh, so I need to offer you an apology for wasting your time and creating some confusion. Um, there really isn't much of a reason for those of you that saw the previous video to watch this video. It's going to have the same flight footage, although I operate from a different perspective in that I know that this is a different product. So if you choose to say, great, thank you. Uh, I hope you can uh, move past my confusion and we can just enjoy ourselves. Let's start off with this image of a comparison between them side by side. As you can see, one is a, a true X frame according to their scale, and we'll weigh mine up here in a minute. The original, the dead cat style, comes in at 21 grams, whereas the new one comes in at 22 grams. We have the same flight controller all in one board, the Goku Versatile, uh, and that does feature a 250 milliwatt smart audio capable VTX on it as well. We also have different KV of motors, which I think that was another mistake that I had made in my confusion previously. Uh, on the original, it's a lower KV, so longer flight time. And on the new version with the 0802.4, 19,500 KV, a little more punch, a little bit more top end. Uh, also, it's obvious that one of those differences, tri-blades versus bi-blades. We know that when we add more blades, we lose a little efficiency, but we gain more thrust and agility and maybe some tight cornering. Uh, also, they kind of changed things on the battery side. On the Dead Cat style, they were thinking, you know, 450 to 750 milliamp. And I did a whole bunch of testing on batteries in that video. Versus this one, they're thinking 350 to 450. I didn't really care for the 350 just because I started getting battery voltage warnings uh, fairly quickly, especially on punch outs, uh, especially longer punch outs. It still features the same camera. Uh, so that is another consistency between them. And they also offer optional canopies to where you can mount an Insta360 GO 2 or the original GO 1. So we look at the frame and there's the obvious difference of having uh, the Dead Cat style on the left versus the True X on the right. Uh, this one also, and I think they may have made this change on the Dead Cat after their revision, the one I was confused about, uh, to where you can mount the print for your battery or use rubber bands. Uh, you can toilet tank it, which is to run it sideways, which I like because it feels a little bit different on the roll axis and for my flight style and what I like. Uh, I enjoy that uh, versus uh, having it in the traditional manner to where the battery runs front to back. Uh, also, it's worth noting that that print is on there really good because I actually tried to get it off so I could run it my preferred style. But I struggled with that and I was worried that if I kept trying, I was going to end up tearing the battery print. So that's that's something to be aware of with this. Uh, also, I think I probably put this on mine uh, previously. Some of the in the previous mess up video, uh, I was questioning whether I had done that or whether it came that way. And people who had bought this uh, updated me that theirs did not come with this. So I suspect that's something I did after the fact. Also, I've got a tiny little piece of electrical tape. I was concerned that my video reception on the original video uh, was getting some sort of grounding problem by making this uh, contact, excuse me, by making the antenna connector connected or contacted with the uh, frame. So I put that under there. I did some testing, didn't make any difference. I don't think I made a video on that. But otherwise, you know, outside of the canopy, frame change, and uh, well, I guess it depends on the version that you get. They're pretty much very, very similar. I should add that if you have this and you want to upgrade to this, uh, props in a new frame uh, with the Flywoo current sale only cost you $6. Of course, you don't quite have the same KV and motors, but what else is interesting is the PID tune on these are identical. Okay, so let's get to weighing them up. So Flywoo had the original Dead Cat style at 21 grams. On my scale, it comes into almost 22 grams. And Flywoo had 22 grams on the True X style, and it comes in at 23 and a half grams on my scale. In my flights, you're gonna see it with the 450 milliamp battery. And with that battery, it weighs 37 and a half grams. You get it about a minute less fly time, although, you know, less weight, more agility, but also less weight can't fight the wind as much. Uh, they do offer this 350 milliamp 1S battery, which brings the weight to 32 and about a third grams. So the original Dead Cat style frame looks to be 1.3, 1.4 millimeters thick. And the new version looks to be exactly 1.5 millimeters. I could have swore last time I measured this, it was slightly under 1.5. Obviously the arm dimensions are gonna be kind of different, but on the True X, looks to be about 76 and a half millimeters. Motor post to motor post. 
Got a fairly nice day. It's a little bit chilly, uh, but not bad. Uh, this was actually quite a while ago from you guys that uh, saw the previous video. could probably uh, remember that information. I am flying this with the Radiomaster Zorro, by the way. Um, as I stated in that video, uh, I am going to be migrating that direction. And so I, <laughs> I was flying it with this, but I couldn't really show it to you at the time, I think. There was something about it. I think it might have been the embargo that was keeping me from showing it uh, to you at the time. So I had to fly something else in that video. That that's an aside. Just so you know uh, what's going on. And this is also uh, flying with the uh, Orca V2 goggles, by the way. Uh, so I've been doing some fairly extensive testing, mainly looking at the DVR and what's going to work best for my workflow, uh, as well as the reception, because I, I do want to show these and um, a light to where the, you can see things as they're reflected in the goggles. And I think with the Orca goggles and the rapid fire module. While it's kind of an accepted sort of format, you know, I, I see it as grossly different with the Sky Zones, and I'm a little bit torn as to how I'm going to proceed. Um, just because I'm not sure how prevalent the Sky Zones are in its use, or if people are using Sky Zones with rapid, rapid fire, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm really just kind of wavering. I've still got some more testing to do. I have noticed with the Sky Zone goggles, at least in my case, that I still get some rolling image if I use uh, Mix 1 or Mix 2. I sometimes have to go to Mix 3, um, or as some other people have suggested, I, I drop down and go to uh, re rebooting the uh, goggles when the, the quad's on. I'm not sure what that's all about, but mine are also fully updated, and some people were telling me that it's possible that the latest update maybe have, has introduced more of that rolling image issue. If you're not certain what the rolling image issue is, I wouldn't be concerned about it at this point. It's very specific to this kind of this new age of um, blending signals on dual uh, receiver uh, video mo uh, modules, so rapid fire, TBS Fusion, Wildfire, just about all of them are doing the same thing. They're just doing it in somewhat different ways as far as the software goes. But back to the quad. This one is much more my style for 1S. Now I prefer 2S. The Rocket Race is still my favorite, you know, micro to fly around. But when it comes to flying 1S, I prefer uh, a little bit more oomph, a little bit more uh, ability to basically have some thrust left over. So if I make a mistake, I have some thrust left for corrections. Uh, which is always a little important, and uh, that's probably why I like 2S whoops in the house too, because then I have loads of thrust uh, to correct my mistakes uh, on a whoop. For 1S, this is much more my style, and it's much more enjoyable in me. For me, you know, it's not still going to have nearly the same performance that the 2S Rocket Race does, but there's a lot of people out there that like 1S. Uh, you can fly them in small parks. You can fly them really, really small places, like the size of this patio and those trees right there. You could make that into a race course if you chose to. Uh, it's just so so small, so light, so agile. Um, so you, you can definitely tell that um, something like this can be flown in a myriad of places. And without prop guards, it handles wind fairly well. That's something else that I uh, learned about this particular quad. It doesn't weigh a whole lot but it does pretty well when it comes to the wind. Here we're gonna eventually come down and land. You can see my flight time is over three minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, you do get about a minute less on the 350, and I did adjust my battery voltage warnings uh, to meet this kind of where I try to come in and disarm at 3.5 volts, but you can see the battery is creeping above the 3.5 volts. Uh, so the battery's in good shape. Um, it's not a storage charge. I know some people like to fly down to storage charge, but that's something you'll have to gauge yourself. Something I glazed over, uh, they, they also changed the GNB27 here on the connector, which we know has more bandwidth. It, it has more throughput than the old PH20. PH20 tends to break down. Uh, the best PH20s even do break down. They just take longer to do that. There's also some indications I've read from some other people that the solid pin PH2 may wallow out our batteries a little bit. So... Uh, I have also had an issue um, on this quad with one particular battery that I had that if I fully seated the battery all the way in, it didn't power the board. So I had to pull it back just a touch. So the GNB27 connectors aren't perfect because uh, I've seen something similar and talked to a few other people that have had similar experiences with them not being perfect for every battery. That's, uh, again, marrying both ends up. Uh, you don't always, from battery to battery, get a perfect connection. So I think that's something that's going to have to be corrected, I think, in order to really change the hobby in the way that it might to where it's adopted more. I think mainly this has got a lot of attention from other manufacturers because they can get this connector, they can get the performance improvement, and it doesn't cost them a lot. Uh, 
Beta FPV also has their BT20, which a lot of people really love. But the reason why we're not seeing other quads with it for the most part is that Beta FPV seems to be charging a premium for their BT20 connector. Um, my understanding is GNB originally came to Beta FPV and wanting to make batteries with the BT20, and Beta FPV was uh, apparently they couldn't work out a deal that, that was feasible for either party so gnb made their own and fragmented the market a little bit more but we'll see eventually there will be a winner um but you may have already invested some batteries if you've invested for bat in batteries and swapped over you probably just swap this to whatever you've swapped to some people still prefer xt30 i think on something that's like that's a, a gram you don't need but you know to each their own uh, previously, I mentioned in the other video how I talked to a few people that were breaking this camera, and I think through those comments of people that have broken the camera, it wasn't from crashing down here, it was from crashing in here. And unfortunately, with these cameras, they are so exposed because they have such a wide field of view. And I like a super wide field of view because it gives you a greater sense of speed. It's not real speed, but it sure makes the flight fun is that you have this super wide field of view and you get that Star Wars sort of flying through the forest on one of those speeder bikes sort of feel but it's really hard to give it much camera protection because it does have such a wide field of view you bump this print out here a little bit to try to protect this and then you start to see it and we've we've seen that in goggles as well or not goggles in in other quads as well that you know it's just really hard to match this super wide field of view and camera protection uh, usually you can get a tiny bit but it's not much and people on those quads like the mobula 6 uh, it has a tiny bit of camera protection, but people are breaking those cameras as well. So eh, if you do find it out of focus, you can opt sometimes, if you've got the finesse, turn the outer ring in order to refocus your camera. Uh, they're glued typically, so you may need to apply some heat before you turn, and it's going to be a little bit of a finesse, tedious sort of process, but if yours is blurry, you might be able to find your way into uh, focus again by, by trying that out. Uh, th this little part here is obviously it's either added design flare or it's there to protect your antenna. I did notice that it could be a placebo. I got better reception with the wire sticking just outside of the TPU print. So try it if you want to try it and see if you can get a little better reception. Also, I fly race band 8 because race band 8 in my area is the cleanest channel. It's above uh, Wi-Fi interference, um, and so that's how I get the reception I get. Also, in that video, you were seeing, again, the Rapid Fire module fully updated with the uh, Orca V2 goggles. Uh, mine has Express LRS. They do have other versions on their site that are available. I like Express LRS. I think there's a lot to be had there. Tiny little light receivers, long range, higher packet rate, Cheaper hardware, those are all good things in my opinion. Uh, so Express RS is the way I've gone. I did not put the little electrical tape down here to see if my reception would get better. I think I can see clearance down there just a hair if I get it lined up just right. I don't know if I can get that lined up on camera just so, but um, it doesn't seem to be natively touching uh, the connector of the antenna down to the carbon fiber frame. So that's a good thing. Uh, and so we take a look at the bottom and it's not unusual that we have kind of a mixed bag of screws. We've got uh, hex headed screws in our frame and then we've got Phillips screws out here on our motors. They are attractive looking motors, although they're so small and my old eyes can't hardly read them. So I have to go by the uh, paper printout as to what they actually say. Um, I think many people when it comes to these motors, and I only mention it not as a, a con, but I'm wondering if we don't need to be moving in this direction to see... I don't know how well I can show this. If you look right back here, and I can get my camera to zoom in and focus. See that little area right there in the center? That's actually a small PCB at the base of the motor, and then the wires connect to that. So if you have uh, an accident, <laughs> and a sudden landing, an unintended landing, and you rip a motor off, uh, there's potential that you can actually repair it with just some motor wire. Uh, and I think on these micro motors, I know weight's a big deal when it comes to whoops in these motors, um, but if it doesn't come out to more than, say, a tenth of a gram, which I wouldn't think it would, I think it would be less than a tenth of a gram, this would be, this would allow us to have more reliable 
and repairable motors long term. So I think all the manufacturers need to do this sort of thing with their motors. The Firefly 1S FR Nano Baby Quad uh, retails at slightly over $102. Uh, if you go to Flywoo's site right now, they have a sale on it. I think it's 13% off if I'm reading that correctly. I don't have my glasses on right in the moment. Uh, so you can pick this up at a little bit of a sale if you buy it directly from Flywoo. But I'll put various resellers down in the video description below. Uh, again, I apologize for being so confused and out in the cold as far as what I was looking at in my previous video. Uh, and if I've wasted some of your time, again, my sincerest apologies. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.